All right, guys, welcome back to part two. Um, I've been working on the BD 125-2 overnight. As you can see, I have the inside of the rear fender painted now. And then I'll switch the camera over and show you what I got going on with the wheel. Okay, so here I have my Harbor Freight wheel balancing stand. Um, I just got that assembled. And I was trying to put the wheel on there, but... Uh, as you can see, the rod is not the correct size. Uh, that's what sits up top. So I tried to grind it down on the bench grinder over there, and it was just taking forever, and then there's no way it would be accurate uh, by the time it was done, or even close to. I needed to shave off an extra millimeter. That was 12 point something. This was 11 point something. That's the factory axle that fits in the bearings. So... I was looking around my garage and I found this fire poker and this is actually really close. Now it's probably not going to be perfectly straight, but it's the best that I got because finding metric rod is very difficult and finding something that's, you know, within a tenth of a millimeter of accuracy is also very difficult. So that's what we got going on. So I just cut the end of this off since it's uh, not needed. And I'm just going to uh, wire brush this and then cut this end off and give it a shot and hope that I can balance the wheel here. All right, after many, many minutes of using the wire brush on the bench grinder, I have a very finely machined remnant of a fire poker. So let's go ahead and see if this thing fits should fit this perfectly. Let's see if it's straight. Oh yeah, that'll do. All right, and then I'll, I'm gonna need two hands for this one. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the wheel, hopefully. Holy crap, did I luck out. Wow. And this is super snug. I think that this is even snugger than the the factory axle, to be honest. Because at the wear parts, what are we seeing? I think it was 11.4 before. I'm getting 11.8 there. Hmm, okay. 11.7, 11.8. Yeah, oh, 11.8. <laughs> okay, so it's literally identical to the factory axle. Man, I'm lucky I just had that laying around. Oh, ouch. Anyway, time to balance and true the wheel. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and wipe off all this grease here like that. Um, and then we'll go ahead and spin it and balance it and apparently uh what does it say here basically uh whichever part goes down um it says uh the opposite is where you want the weight so it's just using gravity to balance um and then also i'll be able to true it i have a dial board gauge here that i'm going to rig up onto the side because uh there is some play from left to right. Uh, it's kind of hard to show at this low of an RPM, but that's definitely uh, the main issue that we want to solve. Okay, so uh, this is the most scientific I've ever gotten with measuring, but uh, we have our wheel on the stand. We have our dial board gauge, and this will show you how much run out there is on this wheel that's out of true. So, yeah, those are in thousands of an inch, so it's not a whole lot, but you can see on the left side here how it's moving. Right there, that's the, the big bad. So, I want to get this as close as I can. Usually I just do this on bicycles against the brakes and kind of do it by eyesight and by feel. But on this one, since it's higher speed, I'm going to do my best to uh, try to use the gauge. 
And then I got my uh, little spoke wrench that I got off of eBay as well. So I'm just going to be tightening and loosening spokes over here until uh, everything's close to the same when I spin it. Well, it was going pretty well. I got everything within 20 thousandths of an inch until uh, I had a spoke break. This one didn't want to tighten up anymore. I guess maybe I should have loosened up a bit. Anyway, on to the next disaster of this project. Uh, I gotta find another spoke, I guess. Alright, after lots of measuring and lots of research, I found another one of these spokes. Um, turns out that it is, uh, within two millimeters of a spoke for a front wheel on a Honda CT90 or 70, anyway, all the old Hondas that have the 17 inch wheels. Um, so they're relatively cheap, it was like three dozen for like 22 bucks, but I have to wait for shipping from China. So it's probably going to be another two weeks before I can finish this project. Anyway, that's the update. Alright guys, welcome back. You join me one month later. Uh, the Boom BD 125 2 is back together. Uh, let me flip around the camera and show you here. Okay, so here it is the Boom BD 125 2. I did end up getting the replacement spokes. Um, I only need to replace one, and it is that one, slightly different color. Um, it was. I think three, maybe four millimeters too long. I just cut it off with a Dremel and it fit just fine and the thread reach was plenty um, and it tightened up just fine. Uh, I was able to get the wheel spec back in to within 20 thousandths, but uh, due to things like this minor dent in the rim there during shipping and a few other things, uh, I couldn't get it perfect. Uh, and I'm not a professional wheel balancer or motorcycle mechanic by any means, uh, but I, it's better than it was. Um, and I also have wheel weights on there and balance the wheel. You can turn it as slow as this, just maybe a mile an hour or two on the stand, and it would keep rolling for about two minutes. So that's really well balanced. Um, yeah, I also got the new sprocket in up front. I decided to go with a 17 tooth instead of a 16 tooth, so that's all done. Um, let's see, what else? Basically, uh, oh, yes, um, these marks here, they leave a little bit to be desired. They aren't perfect. I have it right there, just a little bit past the second mark in on this side, and I have uh, the same setting on this side. I'm not sure if you can see it in the shadow, uh, but our wheel is clocked a little bit. I can get the alignment stick here. I don't know if it'll show up on camera that well. I'd say we're about two degrees off towards the right. It dog tracks a little bit on the highway, so I'm going to be fixing that today before today's ride. It's, it's super simple. Just have to loosen that axle and then adjust these forward and backwards until I get the chain tension I want and I get uh, the wheel alignment that I want. Oh, and also for an update uh, before we get rolling on the road, um, I've put on, I don't know what it was at before, but we're at 306 miles now. So I went out on the highway again uh, with the new gearing. Uh, it's a lot better. It's still not like as fast as I'd like it to be, but 50 miles an hour is quite comfortable without uh, much vibration from the engine. Uh, I could easily hang 55 if I wanted to, but it is a little buzzier. And also another update uh, for long term. This fuel filter is getting kind of white. I assume that is from being baked from the heat off the engine there, um, and it leaks a little bit. So I've been turning the petcock off every single time after riding it, uh, just to prevent fires. Um, 
it's it's a slow leak i will fix it, it but uh yeah that does need to be changed and also it has developed a little bit of a base gasket leak here of motor oil i have changed the oil once um but it hasn't been leaving that big of a spot on the ground. Um, it does burn a little oil, surprisingly enough, uh, for a brand new engine. Uh, when I changed the oil after 200 some miles, the dipstick was uh, pretty much at the bottom, at the low setting. And I think I got another six ounces in there than what I took out. And, well, we're doing good now. I mean, I've put on maybe 80 miles since the oil change and uh, we're still at the top so maybe maybe that consumption was just because the oil that it came with wasn't so good i just put in uh, the basic conventional uh, valvoline uh, oil for motorcycles um, other than that uh, this screw likes to vibrate loose on the highway and then this whole heat shield rattles so I'm going to put a lock washer or some high temp Loctite or something on that eventually. I've got it really cranked down and it hasn't vibrated loose since, but I've only put on about 10 miles since then. Uh, so yeah, that is pretty much most of the updates. Uh, oh, yes. I also fixed the headlight alignment issue. I notched this back as far as possible. So uh, we now have the adjustment range, and then also you'll see that this is an LED bulb in a incandescent housing. So this is a dish, and when it would illuminate the low beam, it would bounce off the bottom of the dish, and then bounce off the top of the dish, and then shine up and out. So my essentially my high beam and low beam were reversed. So I flipped the bulb inside of there, uh, in order to get the top, here I'll show you, in order to get the top uh, LED to illuminate and then refract the light downwards. And then, well it's too light out to see, but the top one is illuminated and then it refracts downwards and then I have a low beam. However, um, you might notice there is absolutely no change there and that is because by flipping the bulb, I have also realigned the contacts and lost the ability to have a high beam. But on this LED bulb, it really didn't matter. Um, it was basically a 10% uh, brightness increase and didn't really change the position of the light. So, uh, so I'm just fine with this. Uh, anyway, all right, so that is about all the updates that I have right now on the bike. I'm going to go ahead and uh, align that rear wheel real quick. Should only take me five or ten minutes, and then we'll hop on this thing and go for a ride. Okay, so I got the uh, axle nut loosened up here, and then I got my alignment board here, and you can see how it's uh, off to one side with the front. You can kind of gun sight it. You can see on this side as well. Um, I have everything relatively straight. Maybe just turn this a tad more. So yeah, so I've got to go over a little bit here and uh, I'm just going to go until that stick lines up with the front. Alright, you joined me at the other end of the bike this time. Due to the way the wheels are spaced here, um, the tracks actually are not the same front to back. Like the wheels are physically off by about three quarters of an inch. Um, and that's just, I would move it if I could, but then my brakes won't line up with these tabs and they won't work anymore. However, our alignment stick, I don't know if you can see it with the angle of the camera lens, um, but, uh, I believe we are in alignment now. At least, uh, as far as the pivoting of the rear axle goes. Uh, which is amusing because we are about... Two and a half on the uh, left side, and on the right side, we're at about uh, one and three quarters. So, uh, yeah, those swing arm marks, nada. Um, but yeah, now that we got this uh, lined up, I'm going to go ahead and tighten the axle back up, and uh, then we're ready to rock and roll. All right, 
this is all uh, tightened down, ready to go. Got a little bit of uh, blue Loctite on that, <clears throat> that piece right there. Give that its 20 minutes to set up, and then uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go get some gas here and uh, fill this bugger up and go on the road. Alright guys, welcome back. So that is all I have for you today. Um, I have a lot more footage uh, that I was going to do as one video, but um, we're already at a little over 15 minute run time and it's a very long motorcycle ride after this. And I know how a lot of people like the build videos and then it seems like the other half of the audience likes the ride videos. So I'm just going to split this up into a build video first and then the ride video second. And that will be coming out the following week. Um, so if you like this video, make sure to uh, give it a thumbs up. Um, also, if you want to see that other video that's coming out next week, hit subscribe. And then hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when it comes out. And I'll see you guys next time.